Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Goonies World. I am Johnny Pharaoh, also known as Sean. And with me, as always, is Ryan, also known as Meanie. Hello. And, of course, we have Goonie, also known as Colin. Say hello to the nice people, Goonie. What's up? Okay. And we are back with our third installment of our latest attempt at a kids on bikes game. And we actually rolled some dice last time. And so yeah. maybe maybe we'll roll some more dice this time. It seems and likely. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, we uh, left off, and we're just going to pick up directly where we left off. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, do a recap or anything other than to say that uh, Dickie and Plunger and uh, their friend Elliot... Uh, have been conducting a bit of an investigation here at uh, Big Hooters Campgrounds, home of Owl Camp, of course, and uh, it's sort of an investigation into the dis- disappearance of their fourth bunk mate, uh, DJ, um, the uh, grandson of the mysteriously disappeared Pale Dale from our very first Kids on Bike, Kids on Bikes series. So uh, we pick up with uh, our. Uh, intrepid investigators uh, hot apparently on the trail of DJ's size 8 Reeboks um, heading deeper into the woods next to a suspiciously sized uh, pair of hiking boots that look like they could possibly be approximately the same size as ones uh, worn by someone known as Benny King, whom we have dealt with for two episodes now as Plunger's best friend or nemesis. We aren't, we aren't sure. Well, I've already got a best friend. Don't you worry about anything, Dickie. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm you- your equal, but I'm your friend. Um, this other guy... Well, you're, you're definitely my friend. I... I, I <laughs> Yeah, well. Uh, hey, when, uh, once you've been wedged together, then it's pretty hard to break that bond. Yeah, it's definitely a bonding moment. So I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it sounded last time like you guys were going to do one of two things: either try to get Benny to come help you or just proceed further into the woods following these tracks. Well, first of all, if Detective Dwayne is on the premises, it would be helpful to consult with him. But if he is not, then I think we should invite Benny to go with us and see what his reaction is. And I'm going to invite uh, my girlfriend, uh, but going to be my girlfriend, uh, Maria. Oh, listen. I, I'm... I, you do what you want. This is going to end up one way. It's going to end up one way with you crying. That's how it's going to end. I'm telling you that right now. Oh. That's not likely at all. Listen, do you really want her hanging out with smooth-talking Ben King? Tall, couple years older, he's got that blonde hair. Well, I'm going to, uh, give her one of our homemade crucifixes just to make sure Uh, she's going to be completely safe Um, from his from his alleged vampirism she'll be safe but from his his beautiful baby blue eyes and his broad shoulders and his perfectly chiseled features and his blonde hair plunger's a little confused by Benny as you can see (laughs) sounds like you're describing me almost (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes, I know. It could be easily you. No, I'm just saying that Ben seems like kind of a, like a young overman to me, which is all the more reason to watch out for him. Yeah. I got things under control. You just... You just uh, sit back and watch, and, uh, and Dickie will show you how it's done. All right, but you're going to be crying in your pot. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, somebody roll one of you guys. I don't. I don't care which. Roll. Roll. Roll a d6. There is a. Uh, I'm arbitrarily deciding that there is a three in six chance that uh, Detective Dwayne is showing up right at this moment. I rolled a six. 
And he does uh, not. He's not. He's he's having to give Joe Ghost's grandfather a ride to the edge of the county line. <laughs> so uh, what 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 would, what would uh, you young I- investigators like to do? It is still your sort of free time. Let's go see if we can track down Benny. Yeah, we've we've taken uh, photographs and measurements of these tracks, uh, so they're probably not going to go anywhere. You know, we we can find them again, and uh, for now, we should uh, go back and get try to find Benny. Yes, but no, uh, no word. Don't don't say anything about the tracks, though. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. We'll just. Uh, <clears throat> Tell him if ask him if he wants to come along with us. We're going on a hike, and we can uh, talk about you know stuff that's like uh, vampire the uh, mass charade. Well, maybe you could ask him about that. I don't have a problem with him knowing who we're looking for, and kind of, kind of want him to. But uh, we don't need him to know that we found the tracks, and he will intuit that we have also found him. Well, you know because he. I believe mentioned it to you that uh, Benny is staying in the Great Horned Owl Cabin, which is right. uh, on the other side of the mess hall from uh, you guys. So it's a little bit of a walk, but not too terribly far. Why don't you go get your girlfriend, and I'll get Ben, and then we'll meet up. Well, you don't know where she's staying. You didn't happen to ask what cabin she was in. Um, Perhaps you so, could just run through the camp yelling, Maria, Maria. Maria you'd be like, Stanley. Yeah. Maria. Yeah, sing a song. I think that's a, uh, that's from some type of musical. It's from nothing. No, that's uh, from uh, that one where they, the gangsters do all the snapping and. The West Side Story? Yes, that's from, it's from West Side Story. Anyways, uh, I don't appreciate the bastardizations of Shakespeare, so I've never seen that. <laughs> yeah, um, I think uh, Dicky will still attempt to find her if it if it doesn't take too long. Well, he can. He's certainly welcome to uh, try. Let's see. Um, When you don't know where she's staying, what what is he going to do specifically? Like, is he really going to run around screaming Maria? Uh, I kind of think he probably might. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, he's got a flair for the dramatic. He's a romantic, so uh, he's going to maybe even get on the roof of a cabin and and shout out uh, for Maria. Okay, well, um, this is either going to work because it pisses her off and embarrasses her, uh, or it is going to fail because it pisses her off and embarrasses her, and she doesn't uh, want to come out. So I think this is going to have to be a charm, Mr. Newton. If only, right. if only you had a boombox and a Peter Gabriel cassette, this would be so much easier. I think <laughs> this is going to have to be. Oh, see, I don't even know if you can. can really I only have a D8 and D8. Charm. Uh, same as Plunger. We're both about the same. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. So here's what's here's what I'm going to do. I am going to give you an arbitrary plus. No, you know I'm just going to make it. I mean, I'm just going to make it a seven. That's because I mean that's that's still I feel a little bit generous because seven is like a task where success is certain for those very skilled at it. Well, mm-hmm. I mean that that might be that might be fair. Okay. No, I got three. So, uh, yeah, you... Maria! <laughs> Maria! <laughs> serenading, and but uh, she does not... I love you! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she does not uh, 
poke her head out of any of the cabins. Now, if you had succeeded, just as as I kind of mentioned earlier, she would have poked her head out of where she was at and been can upset. I, but can I spend uh, two uh, tokens uh, to produce a uh, boombox with <laughs> Peter Gabriel? <laughs> it's worth the waste of the tokens. I. Um, yes, of course you can. That should add. That should give me, you know, a plus or something. For, uh, le- for, for legal reasons, we cannot. You're not hearing the actual Peter Gabriel song at this time. In you- my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'm going to rule. That I mean, obviously, this the, the, the difficulty. That, the tokens actually, you can. I just, I think, spend just to get, uh, like help. Uh, you can spend it to. I can't remember exactly what it said. Uh, yeah, I actually don't uh, remember, but because we never remember the rules of the games we play, we just fucking play them. Uh, and <laughs> uh, I hope anyone who uh, appreciates this show appreciates that we honestly don't fucking care that much about the rules. We just want to fucking talk in funny voices. As well, so. <laughs> but um, regardless of that, um, I, I I I I think that. It is totally fair for that to give a uh, plus three. Okay. All right, so that would be... What do I need to get? A four. Oops, I'm sorry. And I rolled a one. Oh, no. (laughs) The tape gets eaten. (laughs) Damn it! <laughs> Your copy of Sledgehammer has now been <laughs> eaten by the. I don't know if that was on that album actually. It was on so, so, and I'm not so. even sure it was on on the first release of it. I think they didn't have enough space on either side, you know, back then. Oh yeah, yeah. Like on the LP, I don't think it's there. Somebody's gonna write it and the, tell me uh, I'm wrong. The uh, soundtrack to whatever movie the John yeah, Cusack yeah, movie yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. Well, you are uh, unsuccessful, unfortunately, at uh, locating Maria. Perhaps you'll have better luck locating Benny. All right. Well, yeah. I will uh, first go to uh, Benny the Bode at the uh, at the cabin where I know him to be. And see if yes. he's there. That would be the Great Horned Owl Cabin. Yes, yeah, I'll go to now, the Great Horned Owl. The uh, door is shut. Now, it's just kind of, you know, all these doors are, are, you know, this is Northern California. The weather's super nice. I mean, it's not like a weather door. It's like a, basically a fucking big screen door, essentially, yeah, yeah. right? And um, so you don't have any problem. I mean, it's darker in there than it is out here, so you can't really see in, but you can hear kind of what's going on in there, and you're welcome to stand here and listen if you would like before you attempt to knock or, or whatever just for a moment but not long enough for uh for it to seem suspicious because my heavy tread they may have heard it coming up onto the um, onto the walkway so i will listen just for a moment and see if i hear anything youthful um quick point of order is this wild dicky is doing the maria thing or is he is, were you waiting for him to finish that no i think it was like during we split up okay that works. I didn't want to watch that fiasco. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to say this should be a brains roll, and it's going to be a pretty easy one. Um, I would say five. Oh, that's good, because it's only nine. Well, uh, it is... You don't. First of all, you don't hear Benny's voice. Um, but you hear three other voices talking and laughing, and it is abundantly clear what is happening is that these three people uh, whose names you are able to very quickly uh, well no actually you wouldn't hear their names because they'd be saying their characters names because they're playing Druids of Dragondale oh hello hello yeah yeah uh, come in come in (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Hello there. Hey, what, dude? What? What's your name, dude? 
Well, I'm Plunger, and I could not help but overhear that you are playing a rousing session of George of Dra George of Dragondale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit, whew, a little bit out of breath because uh, we were laughing so hard uh, because uh, the Gelf over here, uh, <laughs> he's man, he's so clumsy. He just like f fell into into a pit. Isn't that right? <laughs> Rolled a one, did he? He did. Yeah. Stupid Gelf. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? The name is Plunger. And, uh, yeah. And I, I'm actually here to, uh, I was looking for Ben. I don't, I don't think he's here, though, is he? No, no. Uh, we all came back after uh, Arts and Crafts to, to play uh, some, dro some, do some DOD, you know. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Benny, we invited him, but he didn't seem interested. He said he had other stuff to do. Yes, yes, yes. He's he's into something very different, very different. Yeah, he was acting. I mean, he was actually acting. He was kind of. I mean, I thought I, there's something with that dude, man. He's like kind of weird. Yeah, he, I mean, he's he's like really, man. I mean, maybe it's just his accent or something. Says one of the other kids. Um, yeah. I mean, but be, anyway, he was just acting. We invited him to play, but. He acted like he was too good for it. Yeah, smug, condescending. Yeah. Yes, I know exactly yeah. the attitude. Uh, Avenging Condor, come in. This is Bot Boy. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Yes, Avenging Condor speaking. Uh, he got her. Maria. Uh, she's <laughs> she's been uh, she's gone. He, <laughs> the uh, Benny guy. He he turned her, or or she's dead. But right. he got her. All right, maybe you better get over here to the, uh, what is it, the horned, the, maybe you better get over to the horned owl cabin. The, yes, the great horned owl. Make yourself, make your way to the great horned owl cabin immediately. Okay, I'm coming. All right. Okay, folks, uh, do you have any idea where he went, though? Uh, no, he just said he had, uh, he, he just kind of, when we said we were going to play some, some DOD, he was like, Psh. and then he said that, um, like he acted like he was too good for it, and he had a, a better game he was going to play or something. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I thought. That's absolutely what I thought. Well, gentlemen, you'll be happy to know that um, at the Northern California Regional DOD Convention last year, I took home the first prize. And so, if you want to play with a truly masterful uh, DOD master, merely uh, come by the the Great Northern. What, we're in the northern spotted, spotted owl. owl cabin, and ask for me, and you will get the game of a lifetime, my friend. I'm a regular contributor to the letters section of Druid Magazine. Oh, okay, yeah, dude. Are you 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 guys play every night? No, not every night. We're currently involved in a very deep investigation at the moment, but uh, as soon as we free up, I d I do have my rule book, and uh, it's the original edition, of course, and. Uh, and I'll be happy to uh, school you a bit. Cool, dude. That sounds awesome. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm going to keep my eye out now for uh, your friend. So uh, if you if you see him, tell him Plunger was looking for him. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, man. Um, did, did that dude on the walkie-talkie say that, like, Benny killed somebody named Maria? Well... He was just joking. We're we're LARPing. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Yes, don't worry about that. It's just a little joke that we share. As I share with my friend who doesn't really know enough about maintaining radio silence on critical issues. <laughs> so, Are you guys playing Druids of Dragon <laughs> Dune? <laughs> so, uh, Northern Spotted Owl, yeah? That's right, that's right. You find me there, but uh, if I'm not there, I'm investigating. But I'll always, I'll be happy to get a game going on as soon as my investigations are completed. All right, man, always good to, uh, to uh, you know, to meet up with, with other fans of Larry Lorax or whoever the fuck wrote Druids of Dragon. I think it was Larry Lorax. It was Larry Lorax, Larry Lorax. Of course, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a con it's a controversial story about the actual authorship, but we will save that for another time. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it could have been that um, Steve Barnison or something. Yeah, it could have been Steve Barnison, but yeah, absolutely. Our plunge's uncle. I think yes. he claimed that at one time. Yes. All right, cool. Well, nice meeting you, uh, Plunger. Uh, absolutely. Oh, by, by the way, uh, yes. uh, I cannot get a look. My name's Dustin, uh, and this is Ralph. 
And that's Steven. He plays the Gelf. So. Dustin Ralph and Steve the Gelf. Got it. All right. See you later, dude. All right. Okay. Now I'll go outside and look for Dickie. And well, uh, he's, he's running towards um, the uh, Great Horned Owl cabin. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, and you see Dicky uh, and uh, oh god, how could I forget that? Elliot? Jesus, you see Dicky and Elliot um, running. Uh, apparently, Elliot stayed with Dicky for whatever reason, and they're running over in your direction as you exit the Great Horned Owl cabin. He got her, my girlfriend. Okay, calm down. Take a deep breath. Okay, remember? Oh, boy. Okay. Remember I taught you about circular breathing? Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah. Now, what evidence do you have that, uh, that, that Ben King has abducted Maria? I take it you couldn't find her. She's nowhere. She, I called out. She would have come. I know it, so she's being held against her will. And the only person is our number one suspect, uh, Benny... King. Well, whether that's true or whether perhaps she's cringing underneath her cot, hiding from you, which I also find to be plausible. Um, no, no. Hey, listen, you're no trip, you're no chip Estrada, all right. You just don't have the way with the ladies. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but. <laughs> well, he taught me some things. So. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, at any rate, I believe that Ben is out. Right now, with some LARPers, perhaps, I believe he could be currently playing this, uh, Vampire the Master Charade. And I just don't know where. Now, well, if you were a LARPing vampire, where would you go? Well, we'll follow the tracks and see, uh, from maybe they, those tracks will lead us to where he is now. Okay, that sounds fair enough. Maybe there's a place where all these vampires meet, and that uh, that's the place where DJ was taken last night. Perhaps they've taken their little game a little too far. Perhaps, or maybe it's no game at all. We'll find that out. All right, so uh, we're going to then uh, follow these tracks further. Uh Having been unable to track down either Maria or Benny, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, get back over to where you last p- saw the tracks and uh, begin to follow them. All right. Deeper into the woods. And um, as you get deeper into the woods and away from the actual sort of campground where all the uh, cabins and, and campers and uh, uh, activity you know, centers and, and things are. And, and there's a swimming pool and all that shit, of course, uh, as well. Um, the forest sort of gets, you know, thicker and... I mean, it, a little d- dimmer as the canopy gets more dense and less sunlight, even less sunlight is able to, to penetrate. And um, you're following this trail of these two uh, sets of feet and uh, see if you can keep it by uh, making that oh I have another 15 no I'll take a diversity token I've not failed a single roll, which is good, but it's also bad, because I have not collected any adversity tokens. Well, I've got enough for the both of us. No, I spent those other two, but now I have The boom box again. and the Peter Gabriel. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Stupid fortunately... Peter Gabriel. <laughs> you, should have, you should have went with uh, Aha or something, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> um, but fortunately, Plunger succeeded, uh, only needing a 10. And, uh, so yeah, um, and here, the, both sets of tracks, um, take on kind of a, uh, a t- 
turn off to the left, um, which if, if they continue for terribly much further, well, I mean, you just have to keep going. I mean, there's, there's several different places that uh, you know of that these could be potentially heading for. Well, which one? Which one is most likely to be a place where people could comfortably gather in a small group? I'll try to rack my brain to see what little areas I remember of Al Camp from over the years. If there's any small caves that seems like that would be uh, uh, interesting to vampires, if there is any, they could like pretend it was nighttime. Uh, if there's any like shelter houses that they could pretend with a little Gothic castle, anything like that. Um, well, Sabretooth Cave is definitely, that's the right direction yeah. for Sabretooth. Yeah. Oh boy, I have to go return to Sabretooth Cave, Dickie? <laughs> yes, return to Sabretooth Cave. Elliot, you're going to see the very place that uh, Dickie has told you about, where we encountered the, the Xenogen. Uh... Er, uh is it like? Are you sure it's not still there? There? No, no, no. Uh, we're not sure at all. Could be waiting for us, but we did see it leave. Uh, but as I said in my little camp story, it could be back, and it uh, could be just waiting for us. So let's all be on guard. It's also possible that, that uh, Ben's not there, and we'll just take a quick look in, and if he's not there, we'll pop back out. Yeah, just just a tiny little peek. It was all, always, uh, well, uh, I don't think we'll see any uh, alien or anything. You, you don't think we'll see it, uh, the alien, right, Plunger? Absolutely not. I do not believe that the alien is anywhere within 30,000 light years of this planet. And really, the actual preferred nomenclature is a xenogen. Not alien. Yeah. Well, and if it was actually from Alpha Centauri, it'd be a hell of a lot less than 30,000 light years. But. <laughs> well, I just forgot that it was from Alpha Centauri. <laughs> it's four point something, right? Well, it might have been. I mean, it's all... Uh, Unfortunately, Johnny Farrow is not as smart as Plunger. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it'll be... Um, I mean, it's going to be a good... I mean, it's not, the forest is not, I mean, it's not, it's, it's like when you w walk through the woods here, um, you know, you might have to have a machete, but here it's not quite so bad. There's not as much undergrowth and stuff, generally. Um, but it is still not great, and the, vi the visibility isn't great um, with all this foliage and stuff. Um, and so, you know, it'll probably be a good... 20 to 30 minutes before you think you can actually make it um, to Sabretooth Cave. Um, and that's going to be cutting it pretty close to being able to get back in time for launch. I don't know how much you care about that. Um, I mean, I know you've got some fluff and crackers, so you We've might got not. reserves. That's right. We've got to use the emergency survival fluff. Yeah, hey, do you think, do you think we should... Uh, should get fluffed up before we go into the cave? Well, we did that before. Yeah, we did that before. And then we couldn't, uh, well, at least I had uh, some reservations about whether it was the fluff or or that I made me see the uh, xenomorph or whether it was really there. But we decided it was the xenomorph and uh, not the fluff, so... Maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of fluff. And I'm just going to jump in and correct you and say that uh, Xenomorph is a Xenogen that has been proven to change shape. So at this point, we have no evidence of that. I believe we should refer to the the entity as a Xenogen. Dickie, believe? Oh, yes. If you, excuse me. <laughs> yes. But no, a little fluff would not hurt in this situation. A little fluff never hurts. Uh, are you guys want to? You guys think we should take some now and then, and then take another bump before we go in the cave? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. I'm not even gonna spread it on the crack. I'm just gonna freebase it. There's no time for that. It's fingers in the jar, fellas. Fingers, fingers in the jar. In the jar. 
<laughs> all right. Well, these, these, uh, all three of these boys dip their fingers in the jar and and take take themselves some uh, dollop of dollop of fluff. It's a good thing that the Xenogen has never tasted this fluff because I could see them staging a full scale invasion just to get their hands on this stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can see it. What a world that would be, huh? Do you think we'd still be friends in a world like that? Well, of course, yeah. Yeah, of course. Friends forever. So, uh, you guys continue walking. And you're not really... I mean, you're following the trail. I mean, you're not even really following a trail anymore. Now you're just... You think it's heading in the direction of Sabretooth, so that's where you're going. And you have a pretty good idea of where it is. You've obviously been there before. Um, I mean, hell, you've probably been there before, you know, during an owl camp. Um, there may have been a field, you know, a field trip there or something. Mm-hmm. Um, although, of course, it had well, been sort of closed. That was back before past. they had to close it. Yeah, yeah the first they, couple uh, years of Al Camp, they still had the tours open, but yeah, yeah, they did they did give tours and they had to close it because of the uh, brown bats. They're extinct or uh, they're endangered. So. Yeah, right. A lot of caves are closed. So as you're, uh, and now you I mean you're so far. I mean. I mean, not not far, not s- far as in like it would take you exceptionally long to get back. But you're you're far enough away that you you know you look in all directions and you can't see, you know, the camp or or anything. Um, We're really out in the wilderness now, Elliot. Have you ever been this far out? Uh, no, it's kind of scary, man. Well. Don't you worry, we are expert uh, survivalists, so uh, we know what we're doing. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but the reason the cave was shut down was because there was a real saber-tooth uh, tiger scene. So uh, be on the lookout for that. We've never encountered that, we just saw the xenogen, but uh, I've always suspected that... Uh, the uh, saber tooth is lurking around as well. Um, I, I, th- I thought I thought those were uh, extinct. Is, is that? Uh, well, one of them obviously survived, uh, and well enough. T- maybe it came through a, a portal, uh, time traveled, or maybe uh, there was a few of them that uh, were able to survive because this cave nobody knows how large this cave is it goes uh just deeper and deeper no one's explored it yes Um, and elliot if you're going to be a member of this gang then you've got to realize that uh mainstream science will have you believe a great many things that are not necessarily so and just as you finish your sentence uh just as you finish saying the word so you hear a loud crack from nearby. And you're only about halfway. You've only been walking about 10 of the 20 minutes you know it's going to take you to get to Sabretooth. I hope that wasn't an bear plunger. I know. I was thinking the same thing. Be very, very careful. Be very still. Because maybe bears make noise. I don't think Sabretooths do, but... Albers are so big, they have to make some kind of noise. Well, I, I do have some recordings, but uh, they're of dubious authenticity, even for me. So, uh, at any rate, just be very careful, cautious, stop moving. Let's take a nice look around. Look casual, though. There's like I'm no gonna... way to look casual, stopping and looking. <laughs> but... I'm going to scan the area. Just, when you do uh, have binoculars, is that. Oh, don't you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I'm sure it'll be hard to pick anything up with binoculars and the foliage, but, uh... Well, I think that is well worth a try. Yep. Mm, uh, let's see, what kind of roll should that be? Just, uh... I guess brains, I don't know what else. Yeah, I think that, uh... I think that brains makes perfect sense, and I don't think it's gonna be super difficult. I think, um... A ten seems fair. Okay. Uh, I rolled a six. Hmm. I don't see anything but leaves. 
You don't but see any. But Plunger, you can try. You want to hand the Binox over to, to Plunger? Yep. Let me, let, yeah. Let me just get a nice good look here. I've been very lucky today so far. I have a 12. Well, that is success. Oh, I'm going to take a token as well. Ah, yes, of course. And um, with a 12 plunger, you see not terribly far away, but partially obscured by a tree, what you are immediately convinced is an owlbear standing on its hind. <gasps> the owlbear! It's the owlbear! Quick, get the Polaroid! Polaroid, get the Polaroid! And I'm fumbling for my Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> Polaroid, okay, quick! Okay, okay. okay. Owlbear! <laughs> breathe, plunger! Breathe, plunger! Yeah, I'm fumbling for the Polaroid. I'm gonna get a Polaroid of the owlbear. I, I am as well. Uh, Alright, so you guys oh, no. each take a snap a photo of this thing um <clears throat> and uh you, you know you you're you're like boosh, boosh, like slides out the bottom of the camera and you guys are shaking them you know as, i don't know if that ev- actually accomplished a goddamn thing but everybody <laughs> fucking did it yeah yeah, yeah. and uh um, vigorously shake them <laughs> and as you know the they come in you know the picture the photograph comes into view uh I don't. A plunger obviously still is 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 just. I don't think there's any way he's going to think it's anything but an owl bear. But you can't really tell. I mean, an owl bear is kind of, uh, you know, it's like got the owl sort of head, you know, mm-hmm. um, but kind of a bear-like body, and you can't really see its head because it's it's hidden behind a tree. You can only make out like its sort of back and sort of front legs uh, which are kind of down at its sides um, that's really all you can see like kind of part of a, a back and torso and and uh, some some front legs okay listen I think one of us needs to get in a little closer and we all know that you're the master of stealth yes uh, I am if, if, if it spots you then I'll create a distraction well, okay. Um, I guess this, uh, I guess robots don't get scared. So, <laughs> I've got to go forward. And, um, he'll kind of, uh, very quietly and slowly walk forward without trying to crunch, you know, any leaves or anything. Um,. As best he can. Well, and I know you have the unassuming uh, strength to uh, sort of... Yeah. You could spend some tokens to to ensure that you are not, if you would like to. Yeah, if I can get close enough and then just... uh, Yeah, like, do that narratively, we can say I just... I found a really good hiding spot close by and... And, uh... Now I can take a picture. Um, you can. I don't know if you want to. It's it's standing there, sniffing the air. It's just a black bear, just standing there. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you want to take a picture, or if you want to go back to Plunger and tell him that it was you. You got close to it and it was owl, owl bear, but it ran away, <laughs> or something like that. It's up to you. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think he wants to make the sound of the uh, Polaroid. Because, uh, you know, the black bear might hear it, and then, uh... Well, and it would probably run away, is what would happen. Probably, but as I informed my mother in the first episode, if it doesn't run away, then I have to fight it, because I can't play dead. It's not gonna work. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I'll just say, uh... I... I'll just take a picture of, uh, like, right next to the black bear, um, so there's nothing there. Um, and then, <clears throat> well, when I click the camera, does it hear it? It does, and I'm going to give it a oh God. really quick roll here. And it fucking runs. 
Yeah, it's fine. They're, they are scaredy cats. Whoa! All right. Um, I mean, I... It, it's, it's, it, as soon as the noise happens, it you know it can its ears can pinpoint exactly where it is, and it looks over, sees you, and fucking opposite direction, deeper into the woods, away from you. Well, I probably saw it run then. Cause I you honest. definitely heard it. Yeah. I mean, it, like, it, it, you, I mean, I was know. looking at its backside when he ran up. So if it moved, I feel like I probably would be able to see it was a bear and not a. Um, I don't know if you would, and I don't know even if he did, if he would accept it. <laughs> but yeah. um, I would say, I would say, I, I think it's fair to uh, give him um, a brains roll of a 10 to uh, identify that it was, in fact, just a, a black bear. And if he does, then I just will let your character, or the player, decide if he, if he okay. well, wins it. I, I must have a weighted dice that rolls 15s, because I've got a 15 again. So you are able to make out that, uh, f- f- faintly, that it looks more like it's probably just a black bear. and when, More when, beer and less ow. When Dickie tried to take a picture of it, it bolted. Um, yeah. Although, I don't know if you'd be able to see, because, I mean, it was facing sort of you guys were, from where you were and where it stood up and cracked a branch and you heard it it was kind of looking off to its left and I imagine that Dickie approached it and then it like just turned and ran directly so you might have just seen bare ass but I still think with the success that you um, whether you believe it to be the owlbear or not is up to you but uh, well I do not believe that the owlbear would have run away that's probably also true yes well when I come back I say, oh man, I uh, it ran away before I got. Uh, I took a picture, but it was gone. And um, but it was definitely an owlbear. Well, Fee, now you know, you Mister Skeptical. Yeah. Uh, you know, you what we're just... gonna have to do is track down this owlbear now. Uh, well, I don't think we're gonna get very far. It the speed that that thing. I was surprised at the speed of an owlbear. Um, I guess it's because it might, because it is part bird, it can um, really uh, go fast speeds. And um, and it was just, and it might not even left any tracks. Uh, well, we'll we'll see about that. Well, I think we better uh, get to the this cave because uh, uh, DJ's life might uh, be at stake. Yeah, yeah, um... Oh, gosh, I hope he's okay. Um, man, um, are you... Sh- oh, what if he comes back, man? Oh, I don't think so. Uh, I think, uh... I mean... I don't think it was running away, uh... Out of fear. No, I don't... If it was an owlbear, it certainly did not run out of fear. So it's far more likely that it would have attacked you. But I agree that there is a human's life in danger, and that takes precedence. We're going to have to continue to Sabertooth Cave. But I just want to tell you, I'm never going to forgive you for squandering the opportunity to get a photo of that thing. Uh, it was weird. It's like I was pointing my camera right at it, and it's like, uh, you know, as soon as I took the picture, it was gone. It was like nothing there. Let me see the uh, empty picture. What's the blank picture you're talking about? I'll show them, because I took the picture, yeah. like, right next hmm. to it. So well, there perhaps, perhaps it has some electro... A uh, magnetic field that it emits uh, that, that uh, would not allow its photo to be taken. I'm not sure. Speaking of which, we should probably get on to uh, Sabertooth, Sabertooth Cave. Yes, uh, you're right. I think uh, we should go, but yeah, it probably interfered with the, uh, the electronics in the camera. Well, you know, the powers of the owlbear are not well understood. Anything would uh, be possible. Fortunately, the remainder of your walk uh, kind of downhill uh, at this point to Sabretooth Cave, about about another 10-12 minutes, uh, passes without incident, and you find yourselves, the three of you, uh, standing outside the mouth, once again, of Sabretooth Cave. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> 
Well, once more into the breach, my brother. Yeah, get your uh, flashlights on. Flashlights on. Uh, cyber arm activated. Nunchuck activated. Uh, yeah, um, so Elliot, uh, what do you have in the way of, uh, weapons at all? Do you have anything that could be of use? Um, I have a pocket knife. Okay, well, that's um, something. That being said, I'm gonna have to disallow any combat actions for a trainee. You could put us in just as much danger by, by his lack of training. Yeah, if you don't know how to handle that, uh, you could hurt yourself or us. Yeah, if it comes down to it, you just hang back. And if we fall, you must save yourself. It's your pocket... Is his pocket knife uh, like a Swiss army knife, or is it... Uh, no, just a, it's just like one of those uh, folding, single-bladed yeah. folding pocket knives. Okay. And I, it's, ha- I have a Swiss army knife if we need one. Yeah, and it's it's not... Particularly sharp or big. I mean, it, you could you could stab somebody with it, but I mean, it would probably just make them angry. Unless you stab them in one of seven principal cardinal locations, that would result in instant death. Which I'm sure Plunger knows all. Of them. I do. I do. In fact, with with a skilled practitioner, a knife is not even necessary. A mere touch on one of the seven points. I I have too much of a sense of responsibility to use that though. Well, yeah, it's almost too easy. Yeah, exactly. So you guys uh, proceed into the darkness. Now, um, it's just you two with flashlights and uh, radios as uh, Elliot does not have any of these things. So he's going to... <coughs> excuse me. He's going to very happily uh, let you guys run point on this. And you uh, step into the cave mouth, waving your flashlights around. And you don't see anything just yet. You don't hear anything. And then hundreds of bats come flapping. It's the loudest fucking thing you could imagine. Just these Vampires! Loud <laughs> wings flapping. Um, just flap, 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 flap. They've polymorphed. Get down! Hit the ground! Over your head as they fly out the uh, mouth of the cave that you've just entered. Apparently you possibly disturbed them. Uh, but that happens fairly quickly. Good thing it's the daytime. Oh, and I mean, even if they're daywalkers, they don't feed in the day usually. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, but they maybe they didn't see us because they're blind as bats. I want to remind you that the brown bat is endangered, and that's why they close this place down. Because very, I, I believe in all of these things, but where where a non supernatural explanation can be offered, we must we must assume that to be the truth first. And if they were vampires, then they clearly have left their kidnapped victims here behind them. So we should move forward without fear. Yes, uh, hopefully, uh, it's, uh, unoccupied now. So you proceed further in to the cave. You get right to that point, um, where you would have to kind of turn <clears throat> where, where, where you had turned and the, the body had kind of been on that ledge and you're getting back to that depth of the cave when your flashlights off, off ahead uh, land upon um, a body lying on the ground. Deja vu, man. All right, let's cautiously approach. I fear the worst. I'm going to shine the flashlight on the body's shoes. Size 8 Reebok. I mean, I wish Chip was here. Yeah, 
Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this point, you know, Plunger's is going to rush up there, see if he's alive, you know. So Plunger rushes up there, and it, it, now, it obviously, DJ, you couldn't see his face, um, but the shoes gave it away anyway, and, but he's kind of in a fetal position. And you, I'm guessing, what I'm imagining anyway, is that you uh, spin it or push him over off his side and onto his back. In the, you know, maybe you have to do CPR. Who knows? But that's going to be the position you want to do it in. Um, and uh, you, uh, I'm assuming you're going to want to check for a pulse. Where are you going to do that? Oh. Neck. Check for the uh, uh, biting marks on the neck. Well, you go to. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, as Dicky as Dicky is saying this, you're going in with your two fingers to check the pulse on the neck, and you see. And that's why I picked the neck. Yeah, you know, blood. You know, like like two puncture wounds, and with two slight streams of blood, now mostly dried. Do I find a pulse? Yes. All right. Good. He can tell us his story. Listen. Is he alive? He's alive. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to carry him out of here. First no, of all, let me see be, if I can revive him first. Just to be clear, is this uh, DJ or is this? Um, it's DJ. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Correct. Uh, it is I'll, DJ. I'll, yeah, I'll do my best to uh, revive him. What are you going to try? I'm going to, uh... With Bernadier. DJ, DJ. And then I'm going to, uh... Lightly tap his cheek. And, uh... Get some marshmallow fluff get some marshmallow. under his nose. There you go, there you go. Get some marshmallow <laughs> fluff under his nose. And if that doesn't work, we're going to have to do the stink finger. <laughs> yeah, you should do that. <laughs> You're stinkier. <laughs> we'll see if the fluff revives him. If anything's going to do it, it'll be that. I'm going to give him a grit roll to see if he wakes up. He's going to need... I think a seven sounds reasonable. And he rolls a seven. Lucky him. So, um, yeah, his eyes kind of start fluttering. And he kind of looks like he can't quite focus them. But he does train them upon you, Plunger. And he says, Where am I? You're in Sabretooth Cave. You've been assaulted by vampires. Or somebody who's very thick and think that they're a vampire. You've been drained. You've been drained of some blood. You might be feeling weak. Um, I think they put something in my drink or something last night. Did you drink blood? No, no I don't think so. It was just water, but it, it kind of tasted funny. Who's they? Well, I don't know. They blindfolded me. Where they come get you in the cabin and blindfolded you? Where were you assaulted? Yeah, well, we were supposed to play a game. And, uh, one of the, the chick from the group came to get me and bring me down here to play. She I see. A, a chick. Always a chick. Wait. What does this chick look like? Um. Uh, she was, was she a Latina lady? No. No, she was, uh... Oh, thank God. She was, uh, dark-haired, uh... They didn't turn her. Dark-haired girl. Ah, uh, she didn't say her name. Did you say... What did you say? Uh, well, my girlfriend's name is Maria. No, no, the plunger. What? It wasn't Tracy, was it? Tracy. She didn't say her name. Uh, I mean, it could have been... Her name could have been Tr Tracy. Tracy? But she's down in Sacramento. Is she? Oh. Well, why is she feeding this far up north? Oh, sh she must have come for a, a gathering. Uh, if it's her, the oh. Council of Vampires. Well, we don't we don't have any proof yet that Tracy is actually involved. 
but the important thing we need to do is get our friend back to uh, get back to camp and uh, take him to see the camp doctor just to make sure everything's fine. And and his you know his parents are probably worried sick yes. because of the phone calls last night. So that's our first priority. But then we know what we have to do after that because we've done this before. We have to alone face the danger. Go in, and, uh... We're going to have to confront Ben King. Yes. And put it in. Put an end to this madness, once and for all. So, for now, let's make a... Can you walk, or do we need to make a stretcher for you? Um, yeah, I think I can walk, but, um... I might need, I might need to, like, lean on his shoulder or something. Yes. yes. Feel free to lean on me. I'm very thick and stable. He's very stout. Yes. I make an excellent catcher when I don't have to move. Um, yeah. Yeah. But listen, you said you heard... Vo- did you hear voices? Did you happen to hear a voice that sounds like a southern gentleman talking like this? Well, I gotta tell you, um, once... I mean, it was just a girl at first, and then I was blindfolded, and they gave me this water to drink. And then everybody started talking, but it was just all hazy and... uh, Just a jumble? Was it, uh, did you get all fuzzy like you had too many, uh, too much marshmallow fluff? Yeah, kind of like that, and... I couldn't just, I couldn't like make out any individual. It was just sort of a drone of, of mixed voices. And then. Were they chanting? They could have been chanting, but I, I don't think so, but maybe. Um, and then I remember. Um, like a pain. And he grabs his neck and. And this, I, I'm imagining now that you guys are kind of... He's kind of walk, like, stumble walking back with you guys uh, towards the camp. And, um... Yeah, so I really... Uh, man, I... I can't remember... I mean, we were supposed to play a game. I didn't think they were going to... Drug me and... It's, leave me to the freaking cave overnight. It's so, just a game until... Someone gets their neck bitten. That's right. You see, these vampire kids, they lose touch with reality. They believe things that aren't real. Not solid things like owlbears and venogens, but uh, sometimes they get a little confused. I'm still not com- entirely convinced these are actual Egyptian daywalkers. Uh, well, they, uh... Might <clears throat> they might have started off as as uh, gamers and then became real life vampires through ancient rituals? Yes, I'll have to see this rule book myself. I should be able to determine that. Yes, uh, this, as, that will clear things. Up. Yeah, as you know, I have quite a extensive knowledge of uh, devil worship rituals as practiced throughout the Western world for the last several millennia. Yes, I am quite uh, versed in. Uh, uh, devil worship myself. Yes, I mean I don't I don't worship the devil, but one must uh, know the enemy. Oh no, yes, you've got to study the occult to defeat it. And uh, that's absolutely right. Yes. So you guys uh, have a mostly uneventful walk back to camp, uh, assisting DJ as needed. Uh, fortunately, the owl bear or whatever does not the bear bear make another appearance (laughs) the bear bear and um when you finally uh get back to big hooters campground um dj adamantly just wants to go lay down in his bunk um I don't know if you guys have other plans for him specifically or what exactly we're taking him straight to the camp doctor and we're not accepting any Anything from him. He's going straight to the camp doctor. And if he doesn't, then we're bringing the camp doctor straight to him. 
Well, yes, but I think we should just drop them off anonymously at the um, camp doctors, and we'll leave them with a crucifix just in case they come back. And uh, and then we've got business, buddy. That's right. So, uh, you, uh, you know, take him to the, uh, the first aid cabin and, uh, instruct him to go in. I take it you're not going to go in with him. I mean, obviously you want to do this anonymously, so it, it wouldn't make sense to go in with him. But you tell him to go in, and he reluctantly does. He would rather have gone just back to bed, but, you know, he, he does feel like he may nice have been drugged, and he probably should. Yeah. You know, wouldn't hurt to. Uh, Got a nice uh, cot in there for you, buddy. So uh, he goes ahead and goes in there, and uh, you note that um, it's about halfway through uh, lunchtime at this point. Maybe, uh, I wonder if we should come back at night. And we actually might see some owls if we come back at night. I, I mean, I, I haven't even seen a one dang owl since I've been here. And uh, you know, we could uh, kill two birds with one stone, but never, I would never kill an owl, though. Uh, just a figure of speech. I think we might have to. I think we skip lunch and surveil Benny, Benny King's. Uh, cabin. Yeah. Find a nice hiding place and keep an eye out. Maybe we can find a perch in a tree. Just like an owl. But I think that uh, the cave is uh, is where they've nested. But uh, maybe we can catch him coming or, or leaving from the cave. I think you've got to maintain the pretense of uh, attending owl camp. You'll have to do owl camp activities. I don't believe that uh, they're just hanging upside down in that cave somewhere right now. <laughs> yeah, he's going through the motions of pretending to be alive, not undead. Well, um, um, oh. Make a... This would be pretty easy, probably. Uh, make brains rolls. Uh, you need... Three. Got it. Got it. That I can get. Super easy, especially with the D20. Um, but, uh, yeah, you see... Um, uh, Mr. Combs and Detective Dwayne burst out of the administrative cabin and run over towards the uh, first aid cabin. Doing their work for them as usual. <laughs> That's not. Well, I just... The, the look on their faces. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, they're not going to give us credit, but maybe... Uh, Maybe DJ will put in a good word for us. Well, I don't do this for the credit. This is, this is well, about science, and this is about justice. Yeah, but it still be pretty nice, you know, to be uh, to be uh, rewarded with uh, some some kind words, maybe get our names in the papers. So, um, well, what do you, are you going to, what, were you going to surveil, uh, Benny's cabin? Was that the plan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, well, we're going to, uh, take spots like, you know, maybe climb a tree, like you said, like a perch like an owl. Um, well, the trees here are pretty hard to climb, and they're kind of yeah, large I don't around. And climbing the, a redwood don't really have uh, yeah like <laughs> branches down low. Um, but you you can you, you know you find a location kind of into the woods that you can kind of hide and keep an eye out 
on uh, things, um, and Benny's cabin, in particular, the the great horned owl cabin. And uh, about 15, 10, 15 minutes after you uh, set up in this spot, you see Benny leave the uh, mess hall. I forgot. <laughs> I always forget that they fucking name these things. That would be the Great Grey Owl Hall. Um, and he uh, begins walking back towards his cabin. Which you are surveilling. Now it's, you have to be patient. He's going to go back there. Eventually he's going to leave again and then we follow him. Yes. He can't escape us this time. Okay, well, you wait patiently. And, uh, Benny does leave, eventually. And, uh... Okay, let's follow him. Well, he leaves, um, dressed differently. He is, uh... Shirtless and wearing swim trunks and uh, flip flops. He's trying to uh, lose us by making us think he's someone else. He must have spotted us. <laughs> Perhaps he's going to the pool. Yeah, well, that's because it's a good excuse. Because he's. We've been made. He's got super uh, eyesight, so he saw us right away and probably smelled us as well. Well, perhaps. And what do you recommend? Well, is there a, uh, like a lunch roll call that we need to, or do they just do that at dinner time and, uh... Well, yeah, so, um, dinner time is kind of like the, on the first night, or the first day, it's sort of like the... Post check in, sort mm-hmm. of, sort of roll call up. So no, they they're not, they're not they don't typically do it at like every meal or anything like that. But they do do it before lights up. Well, we've got some time. Uh, we should, uh, you know, we could uh, just confront him right out in the open. He. He couldn't, uh, he wouldn't be able to get away with, uh, trying anything. Yes, yes, and then he'll just deny it. Yeah. He needs photographic evidence. Yeah, we might just have to, uh, go, uh, you know, uh, I hate to say it, I, I just, but, uh, we might just have to go and play in the pool and have fun. And then, uh, we can resume our investigation. Well, perhaps we invite ourselves to play his little vampire game. Yes, yeah, yeah. If he wants to uh, play games, uh, we're up for the challenge, and uh, he'll maybe he'll lead us, unsuspecting, and uh, that'll be a bad mistake. Well, you follow. Benny. And he does as a matter of fact go to the pool. Let's go talk to him. Alright, let's go. Well, hello there, Benny Kane. How are you? Why, hello there. Plunger, Dickie, Elliot. Now listen, I was just having a fascinating discussion with your roommates who told me that they invited you to play Druid the Dragon Dale with them, but you said you had a better game to play. So I was wondering what game was so incredible, and I thought I might be so bold as to invite myself and my colleagues to play in your game. Oh, well, now I don't know. I don't know if it's really a style of game you'd be very interested in, to tell you the truth, Alplon. Well, I love to observe. Yes, uh, and 
As I have mentioned, we are no strangers to uh, this whole vampire thing. Uh, vampire. You know, well, I'm assuming you have been playing a game, um, and we know what that game is. Dicky, for all you know, I could be playing Tiddlywing. Well, if you were, I'd beat you in tiddlywinks because I'm the best at it. So am I hearing a no from you, Benny King? I didn't say no, Plunger. But it is not my decision, I'm afraid. I'll have to run it by the The elders. Why don't you run it by your committee then and get back to me? Yes, players are allowed into the group. I mean, um, I didn't bring it, but I have a resume, a detailed resume of my gaming history uh, and skills. Um, <clears throat> I wish I had my character, my, um, well, Plunger might have my, uh, uh, my Wendell Woolbeard character sheet somewhere. Um... <clears throat> it might be in that book, but I uh, am well versed in uh, this type of game, so you can relay that to your master, and uh, and uh, I hope to see you later tonight. Well, now, if you could find this resume, I'm sure that, that will work in your favor when the group decides to put uh, your admission to the to our fair little group to a vote but um yeah I'm just I'm just not sure that it's the type of game that you would enjoy however that is not my decision to make and I if if you want me to now I will present your request to the group at our next meeting. Yes. Now, Could you please? I, I will do that, as a matter of fact. Now, I got a favor to ask, Plano. You may ask. Could you get my back? <laughs> he says and like <laughs> holds out the... Uh, no, I got your motion. back. I'm going to reach my, uh, out my claw. <laughs> See, I yeah, yeah. All go. the way from over here. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm. Oh, well, thank you, Dickie. Yeah, it really gets, uh, can really get in those back crevices. <laughs> <laughs> so while you uh, are doing that, he kind of looks over his shoulder at you guys and says, But, just so you know, if you are voted in, and we do vote democratically, if you are voted into the group, there is a certain initiation that one must go through. Oh, and I should mention that while we do vote democratically, the Games Master has veto power. Okay, but you'll vote for us, right? We can count on you. Sure. Very good. You go do that, and you you get you get back with us after you enjoy your little fun bath. All right, now. Well, now we're gonna be playing tonight, so I'll bring it up at uh, at our next session. Very well. Well, hopefully next time we'll be playing a game with Benny King. <laughs> That is very possible. Uh, Mm -hmm. And he says, well, now y'all have a nice afternoon. And uh, jumps into the pool and fiend. (laughs) Uh, Guys, definitely. I think I know what their little initiation is, but we'll, we'll, we'll satisfy our curiosity next time. 